Hi there, my name is Richard Brown, also known as the Property Voice, and uh, I thought I'd just shoot you a, a quick video here because uh, I had a, a reader question that came in after a recent article I, I wrote in YPN magazine. Uh, I'm writing it under the theme of new beginnings, and I was contacted by a gentleman, we'll call him Brian, it's not his real name, just wanted to protect his identity, and uh, he, he responded to the June piece, which was all about uh, the tax changes that were coming in and whether he saw himself on my danger list. Now, this danger list, as I call it, is re in response to some of the changes coming about. So just a quick reminder, increase in stamp duty, withdrawal of mortgage interest relief, and a couple of other things as well. But they're the two big ones that can have the biggest effect, and in, in particular, the mortgage interest relief. So who is on this danger list? And uh, you, if you can identify with one or more of these categories, then maybe you're on it, and uh, it might mean seeking some professional advice. So the first, the first category of people really is, is investors, property investors, investing through their own name. And that could be as a, a, sole, a sole individual, it could be as a partnership. Uh, but basically investing in their own name rather than let's say a limited company or something like that. The second category really that's going to come into play there is people who are using mortgages to fund their purchases. And in particular people who have got even mid to uh, high loan to values on those uh, particular properties. So that's, you know, a double whammy really. If investing in your own name and, and relatively high loan to values, it's something to watch out for. Uh, if you're currently a higher rate taxpayer, definitely something to be mindful of. The other one that's perhaps catching people out as well though, is if you will be a higher rate taxpayer as a result of the changes. And one significant change is that uh, going forward, rental income, not profit, rental income will be added to your other income to determine what tax bracket you will fall into. So a lot of people are finding that they're being bumped into the next tax bracket, whether it's basic rate to high rate to high rate to highest rate, depending of course on your total income. So that's a big change. So if you're going to be bumped into a higher tax bracket, then you're on the danger list. And the, the third, uh, sorry, the final area is uh, if you've got low interest cover of, uh, in terms of uh, your rent payments. If your rent payments have got you know, low interest cover on your mortgages, or indeed if you've got low cash flow, or indeed negative cash flow, some people have got negative cash flow on the properties. They're the, the five things then really to watch out for on the danger list. And if you've ticked more than one, then you'll probably need to be seeking advice sooner rather than later. So the question then is, if I'm on the danger list, what can I do about it? And so uh, I've, I've identified three you know, core uh, approaches, alternative strategies or approaches and options you could take. And that is basically to either defend, vary or seek alternatives. In terms of defence then, the, uh, the obvious things are to reduce debt, reduce the loan to value. So paying down debt is a good thing to do. Fixing your mortgage for a long term, so at least you've got some security or stability or certainty of what you're going to be paying, so there's not going to be any surprises. That's another tactic that you can use there. Steady rent increases is probably going to be wise because these, these effects, especially the mortgage interest relief, doesn't fully come in until 2020. But come 2020, you know, it's not going to be, it's not going to be easy to justify a, a quite a significant rent increase. So small and steady increases as you go is going to be the best way to deal with that then. Um, equally, maybe consider purchasing new rental properties using a limited company instead going forward. Uh, you could equally look to, to, to transfer existing properties into a limited company structure, but that's quite complicated and there's actually a number of tax loop, um, well not gotchas, gotchas actually, uh, for doing that. So it's definitely worth seeking professional advice. But certainly for new, new projects, consider investing via a limited company. I just touched on our next point really, which is to get professional advice. But there's a number of resources around and by all means drop me a note, I can point you in the, in the direction of a few resources to help you in that, in that sense. Finally, I guess in terms of defending the position, is to really make the property appealing. That might mean uh, redecorating, it could mean a refurbishment. But the idea being to make it as um, attractive to the rental uh, market as possible, which will make, uh, make sure you can command the highest rents and also minimize void periods. So that's defend. The second category really is vary. And this is really quite simple. It's if you're looking at a fairly low yield or low cash flowing asset at the moment, is maybe to get a look for higher yield or higher returning or higher cash flow assets going forward. That might mean looking in different parts of the country. So for example, if you're investing in London and the South East, yields are traditionally quite low. Whereas if you go further afield uh, to the North, for example, or the outer regions, generally speaking, you get higher yields. Now, um, it, it isn't all about that, so it's, it may be a mix and match approach, but uh, look for higher yielding locations is certainly one way to, to vary. The other way potentially is to maybe look to convert your existing property into a higher yielding uh, asset class instead. 
So for example, if you've got a single let at the moment, maybe consider turning it into an HMO or a serviced accommodation, a short-term rental type of accommodation instead. So that can actually increase the rental yields as well. And equally, you can look to change uh, strategy. I'm moving really into the third category now, which is alternatives. So changing strategy, maybe away from the traditional rental strategies. So here I'm talking about things like trading property, converting property, or even developing property. And right now, there's quite a lot of uh, money being, or also, yeah, tax money effectively being put into uh, attracting developers because we've got a housing shortage. So the government is actually incentivizing developers to, uh, and, and through the, pl the planning process as well, conversions and developments are becoming quite attractive. And trading properties is classed in a different way as well. So it might be something to look into. And don't forget also creative strategies. So um, the traditional buy to let model is, is certainly under threat. There's no doubt about that. So look at alternative strategies. I'm talking about things like rent to rent and lease options in particular here. But with creative strategy, sometimes also comes increased risk. So do watch out. So I just wanted to say thanks to Brian for writing in and asking for that question. Hope this has been useful. There's the resource on the website. There's the YPM article itself. Follow me and drop me a note, admin at thepropertyvoice.net. I'm happy to answer any further questions. In fact, in that vein, I'd really love to hear what's on your mind because I've got a section now in the magazine which is all about listening to you and your questions and answering those. So drop me a line. Love to hear from you. Thanks very much.